Hey there YouTube, I thought I would shoot a really brief video explaining how to define a tool, touch off a tool, and then use that tool to edge find or uh, set your WPC in your on your work piece using Mach 3 software. So I'll try not to be so long-winded and get right to it. So we're going to define a tool, touch off a tool, and then use that tool to set up or edge find your workpiece. So the very first thing that you're going to need to do, uh, assuming that your machine has limit switches on it, is you're going to need to home it out. If it doesn't have limit switches, do whatever you do to uh, reference your machine. So I am going to uh, home my machine right now. So there you go, and if I switch over to a machine coordinate system, all zeros. Okay, the next step, next thing that you have to do is define your tool. So what you want to do is go to the offset page, and then you want to come down here to save tool offsets, then you want to locate the empty spot where you're going to define your tool. So this is going to be a 5 sixteenths finish end mill. And I'm not going to load any values. I'm going to leave that all zero. And I'm going to say apply. Then OK. So if I double check that, there it is, 5 sixteenths finish end mill. No values loaded right yet, but we're going to get some in there very soon. The next step is obviously to build your tool. So I have that 5 sixteenths end mill, load it into this R8 uh, end mill holder, and I'm going to install that in the spindle. Now we have to set a work set off or work offset up for your tool measurement. So what I like to do, I like to use G59, and you can see, uh, you know, G54 or whatever. G54 has values in it. Uh, we're going to reset these later with new values, but you can see it has values for X, Y, and Z that uh, define the the origin for whatever I did with my last job. G59 I use strictly for touching off tools. So what I've done is uh, I've picked a, picked a fixed location uh, to touch off tools. So for me what works really well nine times out of ten is the uh, center point of the fixed jaw on my vise. So no matter what I do, typically no matter what I have loaded in the, the vice jaws, I almost always can get to this, this point on the vice and touch off tools. And it's pretty stable, it doesn't move. You could also pick a point really anywhere on your table, but uh, this seems to work out really well for me. The uh, center of the fixed uh, jaw on my vice. And that's what the, the X and the Y coordinates are. Uh, on offset G59. Z, there is no value. The Z value is zero. Um, I suppose you could load a value into that if you want it to, as long as you're consistent and you never change it. But for me, it just makes more sense to make G59 zero. So I've loaded that up, and what I'm going to do is jump into MDI and uh, activate a command here. I'm just going to say 
uh, wrap it over to G59 uh, X0 Y0. So there we go. And if I can jog this thing down. can see that we're roughly uh, in the middle of that vice jaw. So doing that with the G59 gives you a nice consistent spot where you can touch the tool off in the same place all the time and it um, seems to work pretty well. So the next step is we need to tell on the offset page we need to tell mock what tool we're measuring. So for me that's tool number 8 and uh, tool number eight does not have anything loaded in for an offset value right now, so let's just confirm that. Uh, it has nothing in for uh, the height value, so that's fine. Um, I'm just going to put a dummy value in there just, uh, just for now. And notice what happens. Now that Mock sees that there is a value for that, it automatically turns on this, this tool offset button. And you, um, you pretty much want to always have that on. This right here, gauge block height, I have it set to 5 thou. And that's because I'm using a uh, 5 thou thick plastic shim to touch off my tools. And that seems to be working really well for me. You could use paper, you could use any basically any soft material that you can measure accurately. Um, paper, thin plastic, cellophane, whatever. I just happen to have an abundance of these 5 thou thick shims. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to uh, use that shim. I'm going to slowly jog that tool down and uh, set that height. So I like to uh, get pretty close by hand. I uh, use my Xbox 3 controller to jog the machine around. Right now, for the because I'm one-handed here holding this video, I'm just going to use the keyboard. But I'm going to just carefully, carefully try to uh, get my end mill as close to that without crashing as I can. So. Usually I can jog a little bit closer, uh, but now what I'm going to do is jump into, I'm um, going to press the tab key on my keyboard, bring up this MPG mode, and I'm going to put the jog mode into step, and I'm going to set the step to uh, 10 thou, and when I do that, I don't have to hold the safety on my, my uh, little Xbox uh, El Cheapo pendant. So I'm just going to very carefully uh, jog this thing down. And I would recommend wearing safety glasses when you do this in case you happen to uh, crash a tool. Okay, I'm pretty close. Now I'm going to get even closer. Okay, now I'm going to change my step or my uh, jog step down to one one thousandth of an inch. And whenever I'm doing that, I always I always go in the opposite direction that I really want to go first, just to make sure that I'm not going to crash my machine. If if you think you're in a one one thousandth of an inch increment, but you happen to be in let's say a one tenth of an inch increment you could see how quickly you could smash the tool into the uh, workpiece and that kind of ruins your day. So now that I've jogged in the positive Z direction a few times, I know I can go in the negative Z direction and uh, I'm not going to get in trouble. So I'm just going to, I'm, I'm, I'm good distance away from my, my vice jaw right now, so I'm going to try to take these steps out as quickly as possible. And when I know I'm close, I'll start looking for drag. So 
there it is. Now I know I, uh, I'm, a, I'm within five thousandths of an inch because I can feel that um, that shim is pinched. So now what I can do is come over here, get rid of the little pendant screen, and what I'm going to do is just say set tool offset. Now I have a value. That's crazy. It's exactly negative 7.3. Um, what it shows you up here is it's actually show, showing you that you're uh, you're not at zero. You're actually five thou above wherever G59 thinks zero is, and that's because you had a five thou thick shim. So if you had a you know a one inch thick shim right now, theoretically you'd be one inch above. Uh, wherever you told the machine uh, zero was because the uh, right now we're, we're compensating for the length of the tool so anyway that's it so that's the procedure that's how you that's how you set the tool that tool is now is now measured and ready to go so just for emphasis so Tool number eight, if I go into save tool offsets and scroll down, tool number eight now has a value under that uh, H column, and you can see negative 7.300276, so it's not exactly 7.3, but it's rounding. So we're good. All right, now I have my workpiece loaded in my vice jaws. And I'm not going to talk too much about that because there's uh, about a you know bazillion things you need to know to do this. But long story short, um, you know you got to make sure you have a good grip on your part. You have to make sure you have enough uh, material exposed in the vice jaws so you don't machine the vice jaws accidentally. Uh, this I'm I'm hanging on to a, a rough billet. Um, unfortunately. Both of my parallels are tight, so that tells me I have it tapped down and it's sitting in there pretty pretty well. But a lot of times when you're on a you know a rough billet where it's you know not all nice smooth perpendicular or you know square surfaces, maybe you may have two parallels under it, but maybe really only one of them is is tight. And you know that's okay because I'm I'm machining all the features I need on the top, then I'll flip it over and finish it. So uh, anyway, there's there's a lot to to say about. Uh, you know this part of the process I don't want to get into all of that but uh, we have the piece in the vice jaws so we're ready to touch it off so the procedure I'm going to use is really similar to what I did before I am going to use a five thou thick piece of shim except now I'm going to touch this tool tool number eight that we already measured I'm going to touch off the top of the workpiece call that uh, zero or whatever I want to call it and establish it so the way I do that I have tool 8 in the spindle and this is you definitely want this turned on because now it's going to use the tool length uh, when it calculates the G54 value I am going to load this into G54 so I want to make sure that's active and I am just going to uh, jog this down until I am approximately where I need to be over the top of the workpiece and then I'm going to uh, use my shim to uh, you know touch this tool off uh, just like I did before so I'm not going to film it again you get the idea but I'm going to go ahead and do it right now so now the tools touched off and I can just barely can just barely feel some drag and so just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to call that surface C0. So what I'm going to do is come over here to mock, get that jog screen or that jog pendant thing off the screen. So G54 is active. I am in position. Up here, I've told it I was using a, f a five thou thick shim. Tool number eight is active in the spindle. Tool offset is on. And what I'm going to do is set the Z value. So there it is. And what happens now 
just like before, that Z value, which is telling me G54's value, it's telling me that I am five thousandths, five one thousandths of an inch above the surface that I've called Z0. So that, that's calculating the length of the tool uh, plus the height of the shim. And now G54 is set up. Uh, we're touched off in the Z direction. So now we can move on to X and Y. The procedure to touch off your X and Y uses the, the screen uh, in the bottom left-hand corner of the offset screen. And what you need to do, uh, we're going to use the end mill as an edge fighter. So it's a 5 16 end mill, so the diameter of the end mill is actually 0.3125. But what I'm going to do is, once again, I'm going to use my uh, 5 thou thick shim to uh, be a spacer between the end mill and the workpiece. So you have to double the value. So the, the diameter of the end mill is 0.3125. I'm going to put a 5 thou sh thick shim between the perimeter or the diameter of the end mill and the workpiece. So I've increased the effective diameter of the end mill by 10 one thousandths of an inch. So that's why I load a value of 0.3225 uh, in here when I'm actually using a 0.3125 end mill. So that's what we do next. So I'm going to turn the uh, spindle on to a really slow RPM. And I'm going to jog it over here in the X direction and I'm going to touch it off. Okay, here we go. switch over into a uh, one thou increment and I'm just going to very carefully put that spacer between the uh, workpiece and the end mill. I'm going to jog that thing over. So right there feel some drag between the end mill and the workpiece. So now I know I'm about five thou of an inch away from that, that edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to this screen and I'm working in the x-axis. I'm on the left hand side of it so I'm going to hit this button right here and when I do that, that x value changes and you can see it now knows that I'm at negative 0.1612, which is exactly one half of that. So now the x-axis is touched off. And basically I'm going to, re going to repeat the uh, same process for the y-axis. So here we are. So I'm going to uh, take the shim place it in between there and very patiently there it is so now I know where to set the uh, y-axis so I'm going to do the same thing I am going to get rid of this screen I'm going to come over here so now I am on the the bottom side of the y-axis or I'm on the negative side of the y-axis so I'm going to press this button right here and when I do that the y will change and now I know that I'm exactly negative 0.1612 uh, on the y-axis one half of the edge finder diameter. This final step uh, just to verify that I am in the right position I always do a quick MDI to uh, move the G54 to the X0, Y0 position. So I'm going to do that right now. 
And I'm going to jog down in Z a little bit. As soon as I get on the right mode here in Mach. And now you can pretty quickly eyeball. Um, it's hard to see on the camera, but you know I can visually visually verify that my tool is in approximately the right position. I wanted to call the the zero or the corner of that that block zero. So beyond that, the only other thing you need to know, um, if you need to manipulate your work offsets, just come in here to work offset. And if you want to drop your Z, just move that, re, you know, reduce this value, subtract a few thou from it. If you want to drop the Z down a little bit to face a little more off your part, if you need to, uh, you know, alter the X or the Y, you can do the same thing there. And that's pretty much it. So there you go. That's a, a brief little tutorial on how to touch off your tools and touch off your parts. Uh, basically set, off your, set up your job in Mach 3.